welcome. Uh, so I thought I'd just do a quick early spring uh, what did I do during the winter video. Uh, by no means is this the answer to everything. Uh, as I've said uh, in some of the groups and things that we've talked about, um, a few of the things you can do over the winter for outside trees, trees that really cannot come inside, uh, will in fact be either injured and or sicken and die if they don't have winter time. Uh, you can do a few things with those. Uh, of course you can, if you get lucky, when you have a uh, kind of a protected outside building, so a potting shack, uh, or a place you keep tools that has enough room. Uh, those are really good because you can put all the plants in there during the winter and they'll most likely be protected from really sub-zero temperature. And that's, that's really what you want to worry about with a pot. Uh, obviously a tree in the ground is going to do pretty well, but a tree in a pot, you know, if they sit there too long, if it gets too cold for too many times, the roots start to freeze solid, it's not going to be very good for your tree. Uh, so that's a good step. A unheated garage is another good choice, uh, and I have one that actually has a lot of space for pots, but I wanted to try to do it outside this year in a protected area. Uh, there is, uh, there are a few drawbacks to the area I picked. There's a few good things too. So first off, if you're going to put them outside and leave them there, you do want to try and protect the roots as much as possible, otherwise why not just leave them wherever it was because they're just as protected. So I got some of this, uh, uh mulch and I picked the black mulch to try and get as much heat protection as possible for the roots and also an experiment maybe this isn't the best choice maybe it is I don't know I found out it seems to have been a good choice um, and I buried them as much as I could some were buried and then over the whole year some of it or half a year some of it washed away uh, but in general they did really well uh, they also had protection from heavy snows. That's the other thing you have to think about if you have your trees outside and they are unprotected. You're going to have to protect them if heavy snow comes and go, make sure you get the snow off or keep the snow from landing on them in the first place. Uh, break it up somehow. So for me, above us on my house is this really nice overhang. The roof comes out, man, uh, probably three feet or more from the side of the house. So pretty much where this line is, it doesn't get any rain, it doesn't get any snow. Uh, this is a dead dry area, really protected. Uh, which brings me to one of the drawbacks. If you really, really protect your trees from the snow and everything, then you're also protecting it from moisture, which is not good. Uh, but nicely, when they are in kind of hibernation mode, right, uh, they don't need to be watered that often, maybe once every couple of weeks. Uh, so I just made sure I remembered and I came out and I watered them. I tried to do it uh, as early in the day as possible on a warmer day whenever I could uh, to try not to just put cold water on cold roots and have it freeze solid in the container uh, when that was possible. If I knew it was just going to be really, really cold and bad, I would actually take some snow and carefully put it on top of some of these and then the snow, the natural snow melt would go in and, and that helps out a lot. But again, it takes extra work, so you just have to be cognizant that uh, doing this is going to cause you a little bit more work, because uh, it's unnatural. All right, so I buried them. Uh, this is obviously not even a bonsai. It's a pre, pre, pre bonsai. I just found it for free at the end of the year and took it. So I wanted it and I kept it safe. I actually have a couple of other uh, fully potted just trees in a pot, which are not bonsai. Uh, sitting over there and they've been waiting for this year and if they all survive and look healthy enough then I'm going to try and make them into some uh, new bonsai. Um, but anyway, back to the real thing. So what I did was I put them out over here, protected them from direct fall. Yeah, if it's windy they were going to get some moisture but usually this part of the house gets almost nothing. It, it's bone dry. Uh, even all spring, summer, fall there's very little gets over here. I have to water it. All right. Um, and then I protected them and kept them safe. The nice thing is they're right by my back door, so I can always just peek out, see how they looked at any time. That's the other thing that you want to think about. If they're in a shed, and the shed is, you know, 25 feet away across uh, two feet of snow, that's something you want to think about, too. Am I going to be able to get there easily? Or am I causing myself something where I'm going to go, ah, eh, they'll be fine, and then you finally get there, and they dried out. So just a few things to think about. Uh, so anyway, I buried them. I kept them. I watered them every two weeks or so. And uh, now here they are. And in fact, uh, 
it seems that they have all survived. We're gonna see how well they do. This is just video one of yay, it's spring, all right? Uh, I live in lower New York, which uh, tends to really have a relaxed winter until it's suddenly hardcore winter. And the winter kicks in and it's negative something night after night after night and you get snow everywhere right when you think spring might be starting to show up. So most of the winter is actually just kind of, it's cold. And then all of a sudden, right at, towards the end, it gets brutal. And they all seem to have made it. Um, you know, I've got a ginkgo that was at the forefront. and But ginkgo can handle cold pretty well. So it seems to have done really well. We've got nice uh, buds starting to swell up. Uh, I've got a couple baby ginkgo over there that are just kind of coming up. They're just a straight tree at this point. Uh, I've got a, a few different kinds of uh, evergreen that I've been trying out. And in fact, one of them, uh, it this, this guy right back here, which I'm sure you can't see that well, uh, was almost dead. They, not this year, but the year before. It, no matter what I did, it just looked terrible. It browned out really bad, and I really thought, oh, no, that's it. Uh, and it was my, one of my first uh, evergreens, and I really I like this one. Um, and so I was kind of sad, and I babied it all spring, summer, fall last year, and it, it's come back. It looks great. So this worked way better. The year before, I left it in a um, garage, and it just, no, it didn't like it. Something about it, maybe it was too dry or too wet, I don't know which, uh, did not enjoy it. So, and then I've got a, a few other just random plants, uh, even a, uh, a maple. This maple, I made a mistake years ago when I was first starting to do trees, and I left it in the house, and I took care of it, and it really taught me a good lesson because the whole winter it had leaves. It looked so healthy, healthy and happy. And then just as spring started to really kick in, all the leaves fell off the tree. And I thought it was dead. It spent half the summer just looking dead. And then uh, luckily I didn't throw it away. I just kind of left it in a spot and just said, okay, well, that, that's sad. And then all of a sudden I saw it budding and starting to put leaves out again. So it, it's because I messed up. I took away its uh, seasonal cycle and it, it messed it up. It had a hard year the next year. It didn't really uh, recover very well, but it's been a, mm, two years since then, um, and it's doing well. Uh, it's it, much healthier looking. It's got a, a thickened up well. So really, my biggest thing is um, to, to make sure outside trees must be outside all the time. The only time you bring them in is I'm having my parents over and I want to show off a specific thing, or I'm having friends over, then I'll pick one, bring it in the house, put it on the table. Then they go right back. They have to go out. Uh, during the winter, you can't baby them that much. You don't wanna pretend like there's some sort of innocent, fragile thing. They're ready for winter. So the biggest thing is obviously their roots are supposed to be in ground. So if it's in a pot, then that's not gonna be good. So consider that, bury it, put it somewhere protected. But as I said, if it's gonna be somewhere difficult to get to, that's gonna cause you to start going, do I wanna water it today? And then it leads to bad stuff. Uh, I used to keep a few like that evergreen at my parents' garage and that was a problem. Do I wanna drive all the way over to my parents' house and water some plants? And eh, maybe tomorrow and then tomorrow and then tomorrow and next thing you know, you've got dead trees. All right, so keep all of that in mind. You want to protect them, not too much. And you wanna make sure that you will be willing to go out and do what you need to do to keep them alive. And this year I did this and it worked really well. Everybody here looks great. I mean, this, this guy is already fully leafed. That guy's okay. You know, he's gonna drop a few and recover. This guy is really nice. Uh, that one back there is a slow uh, starter every year. He was he was a really poorly treated shrub when I, when I got him. I only paid like $2 because it was just, it was terrible. So uh, he's got a little bit of recovery still. Uh, but all of them seem to have done really well. And nothing came over and ate them, which is the other thing to remember. If you're going to leave them outside, deer will suddenly get really, really willing to eat things they normally wouldn't. Uh, I had a couple go after some ginkgo before, which are really not edible. Um, and I even had a deer brutalize my uh, dwarf jade. And that really stank, because it was just starting to look really good, and I came out and like every leaf was gone. Uh, I know that they're... You know that's their thing and they get eaten by an elephant and then they grow back but it has not looked the same it's slow recovery so just remember you got to also put them somewhere where you think they might be protected if you think the deer are going to come over there put some netting up protect it somehow all right um that's it so there you go this worked uh this is not like i said at the very beginning this is not a 
this is the answer. This has its own set of problems. All ways of keeping them over the winter have their own set of problems. But this worked for me, so keep it in mind for yourself. It especially is helpful if you have protection. If you don't have the, the overhang protection, then, uh, I mean, you could put it under something like this, but you know, then again, it's harder to water, it's harder to look at, so it, they all have their own ups and downs. But the two biggest things is, what is the best choice for your tree? which includes what is the best choice for you. What what choice will allow you to do what you need to do without uh, maybe tomorrowing it, all right? You don't want to do that because suddenly it's, you know, you're busy a couple of days and now it's been four days you haven't watered it when you should have watered it. it. It catches up, all right? There you go. So enjoy. I'll be making some more videos as we go along. Um, but right now, there's not a whole lot happening except buds, which is cool and exciting for me, but not exciting for a video. I'll try and make some cutting uh, videos. I have several different trees, uh, a couple of evergreen, uh, a couple of shrubs, an actual a full-on tree that I found that was really sick and I'm hoping can make it. Uh, we'll see. So all of those will turn into videos at some point on cutting them, things like that. And all I'm doing is giving basic ideas. I am not a master. All right? I will never pretend like I am. I'm showing you my learning process and I'm uh, trying to show you uh, my mistakes so that you hopefully don't do them. Some of them are truly stupid, like keeping that maple in the house. Truly stupid choice. Uh, but I learned. I learned a lot from that. Uh, it was kind of a, a dumb experiment and I feel bad for the tree. <laughs> you know? So some of your some of your choices will make mistakes. Uh, hopefully not expensive mistakes. They're just, you know, I mean, like, so have a great time. Enjoy your new or old bonsai experience and I'll see you in a little while.